Huh. Yo, what up? It's Aaron Moses. And I woke up today watching a video by RSD Tyler, one of my mentors. Shout out to him. Shout out to the whole RSD Nation. And the video, the title has something like Disabled Man Laughs at People with Insecurities. And... I guess I didn't really know how to express these ideas that uh, that they were talking about. But if you've been watching my channel for a minute, you know that I tell you that um, a lot of the times I felt like I didn't really go through anything bad. And that's why I have the ideas that I have about life. You know, being all nonchalant and being somebody who just doesn't respond well to a lot of situations. Now, I mean, of course, I went to therapy and that is after I told him, you know, gave him a little background about myself. He was telling me that I got a lot of my issues from not being com being uncomfortable in my life and never really having that that zen place you know but you have to realize that when you go through things that's basically that's a privilege like i mean of course a lot of spiritual gurus a lot of people say that God chooses you for all these bad things that happen to you because he trusts you to be able to use those things to make the world a better place, to be able to to become stronger, to be able to help other people, you know? And if you don't go if you don't go through anything, which is obviously not true about me, if you don't experience certain levels of negativity if you don't experience bad things happening to you you're gonna be a soulless person you're gonna be a default person that's just how it is so i mean i'm not a fucking rich kid but if i was i would have never experienced jail you know, I could have just called my mom. They could have bonded me out, got some fucking $3,000 lawyer, erased my fucking shit, and I would have just never learned. I learned a lot from going to jail all those times. Just the first time. The second time. Like, when I hear about these rich kids and see them really not take anything from me. Some of them do, some of them don't. And I'm looking at them like, dude... You should have just let your parents let you go through that shit. You should have just went through that struggle because you wouldn't be this person. You wouldn't be this person that is can't do certain things socially, fucking goes crazy when people don't like you. I grew up, I'm not even, I am not, maybe I am now, but I don't really explore that part of my life too much. I'm not really used to people liking me in a certain way. So I I run from it a little bit because I'm used to not being liked. I'm used to people, I'm used to rejection. I mean, just as a man, men are supposed to be used to rejection and women are supposed to go fucking crazy. That's how it is. Evolutionary, uh, social, socially, you know, so these mistakes that I make and this rejection that I experienced, it doesn't really phase me, you know? And if I was one of those people, I mean, I do, I can have, the, I can turn the charm on, I can turn the fucking Barney on and make everybody want to be my friend. But if that was just my default setting and I was just used to everybody liking me and used to everybody being my friend and then this one fucking guy that was just not feeling me didn't want to be my friend... I would go fucking crazy. And I laugh at the people who who experience that life. I laugh at the people who are fucking crying because they're getting their lights turned off and their water turned off. 
because that happened so many times as a child. Lights go off, hey. We need the we need that shit, but I I like <coughs> oh, excuse me. I got like a hundred candles in this bitch. Water turns off. Go to the store. Fucking fill them pots up. Clean that stove off. And get it popping, man. Take a fucking little bird bath. Not a big deal. The people who cannot respond to certain situations that I wouldn't say is normal for me right now. But they have no idea. They have no way or reason to be able to cope with these things. They're just, that's laughable. Like, people laughed at me. I mean, I guess the older generation, when I was saying I need to have a phone or whatever, that's not even my thing, but I can't really think of anything right now. Just like, even if you are just not about to hustle like that, and you're just stressed out because you can't find a job, and there's nothing for you to do to get money, because you need other people's permission, you got a fucking computer, you're watching this fucking video. There's some way for you to wake, make fucking money. You know, I mean, some people prefer having a job. Some people prefer having lights and water in their fucking house. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But there's the dirt path that you need to, to walk on to get to the highway. You know what I mean? There's, there's certain things that you just have to go through to make your journey more more real and if you don't experience these these pieces of negativity you're just gonna be like everybody else like I said in another video your pain is what you express every time that you create every relationship that you that you form I mean hope not all of them but there are pieces of pain that you guys share that you too share and I mean the relationships that you build on pain if you realize that you two don't really have that much in common but then you see an insecurity that might come from this person not having a lot of attention when they're younger or growing up poor and that's something you can relate to and then you build your relationship off that pain and all you have in common is negativity that's not something that I would really, I mean, you can grow from that and start to have more things in common with a future life that you build, but that's not, you know, that is, that's, a, that's practical, but that takes a little bit of work. If you, you already have, if you already have something in common with, if you already relate to somebody without the pain and the negativity, you know, that's always better in my opinion, but I mean... You having these colorful pieces of your life that nobody else has experienced is what's going to make you, you. Really. And using those things to make the world a better place, of course, is what I like to do. So when you... When you think about, and then, of course, when I hear, like, when I used to hear family members talking about these fucked up times and all these struggles that they had to go through growing up in poverty in the south side of Chicago in the 80s and things like that, they, they almost celebrate it. Because if... If you take somebody like my mom, you would never fucking know. Like, some of the words that she says and some of her tendencies and just how she problem solves a little bit, you wouldn't really know that she didn't grow up privileged. But when she runs into her colleagues, you know, they are just, they just don't know what to do. In a lot of these situations. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know what she does in her everyday work life now. Because she just 
like graduated and got all this other shit done and blah 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 but I'm sure she experiences that even me me growing up in this fucking rich ass fucking area that I grew up in but living on the normal side of that area where all the normal people live and going to school with these rich people just seeing them it's not even just seeing them function just them crying because they didn't get a new backpack this year just seeing them cry because they didn't get a new pair of shoes this season they didn't get to go on their trip to fucking Hawaii or whatever the fuck and just seeing them lose their shit over shit that I would never fucking experience or I wouldn't really see as something like, oh, you can't go to Hawaii, bitch, I don't have lights on in my house and I'm not supposed to tell anybody, you know, like, shit like that, like, I don't have enough food in my house and I'm fucking falling asleep in first and second period until lunch so I can conserve my energy to eat, not to eat, then eat. And then when I go home, I gotta eat noodles and hot dogs. Like, what the fuck? You didn't get, you didn't, your mom made you a lunch instead of giving you $10 to get the fucking chicken fingers and the fucking fries and the muffin and the cookie and the fucking Gatorade. You are a whiny little bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, people getting mad because people are talking shit about them and, like, I wish somebody would talk shit about me. Nobody even fucking saw me. Nobody even recognized that my life was existing until I start selling drugs. Until I start being an in-demand fucking personality. That's what I had to do to get people. I had fucking begged people to fucking talk shit about me. And you're mad. You're talking shit about me. You're talking shit. When people talk shit about me, I made money. It was either gonna make me some money or it's because I just made some money. So, firstly, realize that all this bullshit and all this negativity that you feel like you're experiencing is it's, it's making something better for you. Your dirt road is gonna lead to a highway if you keep, rock, if you keep walking down the right path, taking these bricks, Mixing the concrete, and you eventually build yourself a ramp. If you're gonna be a normal fucking person, all the motherfucking people during the Great Depression that jumped out of windows and committed suicide because they lost everything because they were gonna live like the people that they just fucking put out of work that went on and fucking made millions of dollars after the Depression, some of them. Shit. In America, somebody becomes, one person becomes a millionaire every year, statistically. How many of those people come from grandparents who were poor before the Great Depression? Who didn't even really recognize the Great Depression? Like, like me. Not like me, but during the recession, whatever, this Bush recession, <clears throat> I didn't feel anything, because we were already poor. Just like everybody, people in the hood... That's why they don't give a fuck about politics, a lot of them. That's why black people don't vote, because a lot of black people, I don't know if most black people still live, still live in the hood, but a lot of black people still live in the hood. And the Great Depression, the recession, none of this shit's going to really change anything. More people are going to go to jail if drug dealers aren't able to sell their drugs because nobody has fucking money to spend. Because more people are going to get killed and more shit's going to get robbed and things is, the, it's, everything's going to take its course, its natural course. But that shit doesn't really, the president and the financial situation of the rich people don't really affect the financial situation of the poor people. Because there's nowhere else they can go but in a grave. You know what I mean? So... All of this negativity, all of these weird things, growing up without a father, now you gotta hang out with these hoodlums because they have fathers, and you like how they act, and they're wilding out and stealing and selling drugs and doing stuff, and you have to figure out 
they're doing these things because their dad's really not being effective in their parenting, so I probably shouldn't be hanging out with them after you go to jail a couple times. And you start to do your own research, and now you get to find out what really being a man means. A man is really not controlling a woman's mind and her money. A man is really not getting into fights. A man is really not out here gangbanging and making kids and calling their baby mamas bitches and carrying on as such. A man is really this. And you had to find that out by not having a father. Because if your father would have raised you, you would have became a little bitch-ass nigga like him and made a whole bunch of kids and left to pursue your own happiness and be a bitch and be somebody who cares about what other people think and not take care of your own kids. So if that man would have raised you, you would have grew up to be a little bitch-ass nigga too. You know? You would have grew up to be a bitch. You would have grew up to be a follower. And you would have grew up to be somebody that you cannot identify with. And realize that you are much happier and better, better off without a bitch-ass nigga raising you. All these people, I wish I had a dad. You do have a dad, nigga. You're, you're, you're a man. You're your own dad. You know what I mean? You got all these cousins and uncles and shit that can be men around you. Let society and yourself and God be your dad. Don't wish that you had your dad because your dad is a bitch. Your dad left because he's a bitch. If he would have stayed, he didn't want you in the first place. So he would have put all his negativity in your life, made you feel bad about being alive. And you would have grew up to be still a bitch. Just like him, but a negative ass bitch instead of an awesome, cool person. I have to say that shit to myself a lot. I had to. So, instead of you taking all of these, I wish, I wish I didn't go through this, realize that these things are molding you into something that that's never existed in this world if everything perfectly would have gone right then you would have been the same person and you would have been going through some normal people shit and you would have been unhappy because you couldn't figure out look when the water goes off we need to go to the store get some fucking gallons of water heat that bitch up until we could get this fucking bill back on you know i fucking i watched them sh I watched some, I don't remember what the fuck it was. It was a long time ago. But this gay dude was talking about how all gay people, all gay men, wish that they were straight. Because it's so much harder being a gay man. You get fucking beat up, I guess, a lot. You get, you know, all this rejection. You become the black sheep of your family. But at the end of the day, if you look at the statistics of gay men, gay men... Fucking don't go to jail as much. If you fucking see Atlanta, fucking all these gay mother, all these gay men usually have a lot of success, financial success, friends. They have the stereotype of being flamboyant and just being free and unstifled. <clears throat> like you see, like compared to like me to some gay dude. I can't, I don't have those social skills, I'm not gonna just go out and fucking, I don't have those same freedoms, because I didn't have to go through the same struggles as a gay man, or some shit, like, or a, somebody that was, grew up in a wheelchair, and they couldn't, they had to learn how to walk, I didn't have to go through those same struggles, although, I mean, yeah, this shit's not, my shit's not finished, because I'm still... A fucking weirdo. I mean, not even just me being weird. I still have to work on some shit. I still would like to work on some shit to get to somewhere that I'm not. But it's not... It's going to be much more for me. It's going to be more... It's going to be more Aaron Moses than if I would have just grew up like my sister. If I would have just grew up my, like my sister, my sister embarrasses easily. My sister stresses out. My others, my sister Leah that's in college. My sister, when she takes tests, she stresses. When she gets her, when she doesn't get her homework done right, she stresses. When she gets a C, she stresses. 
when people don't like her, she doesn't know how to respond. When, when she gets introduced to people that are not like her, she doesn't know how to respond because she was given, she has the social skills to build a circle to keep other people that are not like her out. I didn't have that convenience. I had to fucking be friends with anybody who could fucking see me, you know? And eventually, I started building those skills. And when I started to see that there were people different from me, I appreciated them. And they were welcome to fucking come and and add to my life. My sister doesn't know that. She's not going to be friends with people from all different walks of life. She's going to be set friends with the same... Chantel, Becky, Samantha, Ashley, Rachel, some black, some white, you know, you get a merry soul, but they're all gonna be the same motherfuckers, they're gonna be her, you see my friends, none of my friends are like me, bro, none of them, and everybody's like, how the fuck are you friends with this motherfucker, you're from the suburbs, this is like one of the OGs of the OGs of the hood, this nigga is a fucking, this person, this guy's about to be a doctor, like, shit like that, I'm, I have that convenience, because I started, I st- well, no, I didn't start like that, I st- was actually pretty popular when I was a little kid, some bad shit happened, then I went to middle school and got massacred, then I went to high school and started fucking doing drugs, but I had to start over, I had to, I had to start fresh at a fucked up place mentally and then I had to fucking rebuild myself alright so just be thankful that you are not born innately fucking normal and that you have all these new struggles to go through they're new for you they're not new for other people or I wouldn't even exist in your mind you wouldn't be making me up in your mind and I wouldn't be your imaginary friend that's talking to you through YouTube <clears throat> but that's all man Just be happy Own that you're fucking different And that you're weird And your life's gonna be fucked up and hard While you're turning your dirt road Into a fucking highway Alright That's Aaron motherfucking Moses Socialize with me Facebook Instagram Twitter even Snapchat That's it bro Don't worry be happy do what have to, happy people do. Rebuild yourself. Let's get this motherfucking money. I right, Peace.